Hello, everybody. It's me. I'm back. Yep, it's AM. Hi. Anyway, I thought I'd put some stuff on my face and kind of natter at you for a while. We'll see how this goes. Anyway, this is a palette that I depotted. It was one of those weird ones that you get kind of with the, uh, the holiday stuff. And it's got a real bulky package for what you get. And I'm going, I can do better than that. Let me get my little magnetic palette out and go for broke. Anyway, how's everybody? I hope everybody is no worse off than they need to be. Dang it. One of the shades broke a little. Oh, well. I've got blacks. It's the black. Not such a big a deal. Let's see. What am I going to do? That's a good question. What am I going to do? Let's start over here. And just see how this goes. Anyway. I want to know from y'all. If you also do YouTube. If your if your viewers all actually believe you when you're working with a product that came in in PR about whether or not it's your honest opinion, or if they think you're telling them a tale because you got the stuff for free or you paid to or whatever else. I mean, that's been a biggie for a long time of people going, I don't know if they're telling me the truth or not. So I want to know from you currently what the consensus seems to be on your followers, whether or not they think you're Telling them a tall tale for profit, or if you're landing them with the real truth. So far, as far as I can tell, I've been pretty lucky on it. I, the first piece, the first and only piece of PR I've gotten has been from Apto. And they sent me one of their skin mists, and I dearly loved it. And I used it to death. And they've sent a couple other things, but that's not, it wasn't PR PR. It ended up in my Ipsy bags and that kind of stuff. And I've tried that, and I loved it. And with the first piece that was actual PR... I did a couple of follow-ups on my skin looking better and that kind of stuff. And then did a final follow-up when I got finished using it and was thrilled with it. And no, they didn't pay me to do it. It was not a sponsored video, none of that. But I still wonder sometimes if people look at something like that and go, she's got to be kidding. They had to have paid her. And I'm going, you know, that's kind of rude, but I can see your point. I mean, it's not like. I've got that many followers. It's not like I've got, you know, huge numbers. It's not like I'm monetized yet, so I'm not making any other money. So, you know, that can kind of leave a little bit of a room for doubt there.
but I, I just was thinking about it and going, hmm, I wonder if anybody else that I know on here is having that kind of problem or if they've managed to build up enough trust with their followers that their followers don't look at them and go, hmm, gotta wonder. I mean, let's be real. With some of the stuff that's happened in the makeup community, there's going to be questions about this, that, and the other thing all over the place. You know, who's working for who? Who's doing what? Who's telling the truth and who ain't? Another thing I wanted to talk about is I don't use a script. Unless I'm answering questions for a tag, I don't really put anything down on a piece of paper to read off of while I'm talking to you guys. I just kind of talk about whatever comes to mind. Sometimes it's things like my classes in college where, you know, this class I have to finish, finish reading two novels. And the first one is To Kill a Mockingbird. Now, I've already finished that one. I've read it several times. I think it's a little timely at this point. But, you know, since it was assigned in high school, I've read it several times on my own anyway, and then once more for class, so everything was fresh in what little mind I had. So I was wondering if any of you actually sit down with a script if you're not doing a, you know, like a tag or something. Do you actually script out all of your stuff? I don't know if this thing that I depotted is going to be worth leaving in the in the magnetic palette or not. Like I said, this was a one of those gift box things that you pick up at the drugstore for somebody you ain't got clue on what to get them. And it's one of those, you know, you don't yell at your grandchild for bringing them home because it's cheap and they can afford it. And you don't yell at your grandchild for giving you a present anyway. Let's spritz, let's see if this does any better. That's a little better. Still not great. Kind of meh. Definitely meh. But since she's actually a bit young for watching this, I don't think she'll figure it out. Okay, let's see. Do you people think you're telling the truth? Do you use a script?
what would you think if somebody approached you to become an actual product and it's not a makeup product it's completely out of sphere a product spokesperson as a created character Yes, it's a weird question. And let me tell you, it's a weird situation. Really, a weird situation. It's really strange. At least to my way of thinking. And I'm going, I couldn't follow a script. When, as I, when I was in school and in the drama department, that's why I did lighting. I didn't have to memorize the lines. I had the script in front of me with the lighting cues. Made things a lot easier. I'll be right back. I'll make sure I clip that out. Runny nose, runny nose. Ick. Okay, let this one be a reminder to you. Check out the colors before you spend time putting stickies into onto the back of things. to put into a magnetic palette so you don't waste your stickies. Oh well. Because this is really sad. I'm going to finish it. Put the rest of my face on. And cry over it later. Now, I decided that at one point I wanted to try a few different things for the channel. To see if I can't get a little variety going. See if anybody thinks the variety is any help that kind of thing. So I tried doing a video on a piece of music that I am absolutely in love with. And now I am going through the waiting process. Because the piece of music is copyrighted. Got a really nice video with it. All that stuff. So you have to wait after you send an explanation. You have to wait for the copyright holder to decide if it's definitely enough different that it's not going to damage their copyright. And all that stuff. They get 30 days to do that. So if y'all wanted to, wanted to decide to start doing that kind of thing, there is that. If you're working with anything that's copywritten, it's got copyright all over it, that the copyright holder can put a lock on your film until they have had time to review it. Now, this is not a copyright strike. It's just a hold. So, you know, it's what it is. You deal with it. OK. 
could be worse. All right, I'm gonna put some eyebrows on. Now, I am having a lot of fun with the fact that I can change my hair with at the drop of a razor currently. And I just have decided to keep it baldy for the summer because it's actually much cooler for me. And I'm going to You know, if I let it grow out again at least a little bit so I can put some funky colors in it, yeah, that'll happen, but I don't anticipating it happen too quick. The other thing I'm thinking about is I am thinking about keeping it this way for quite a while and doing something like come cooler weather getting a couple of wigs. That way I can change up my hair all kinds of ways. I'm thinking about it. I'm still, I'm still doing that debate thing, you know? Debate. Okay. Get my little bitty washer rag here and my micellar water. Drop a little micellar water on my little rag here. Clean up these edges just a little. Now, I primed my whole face, including putting the eye, eye lid primer on before I turned the camera on. I just did this time. Now, just like a regular one of those disposables, this works just fine cleaning up edges. And then once I get it used as much as I'm going to use it, I drop it into a little net bag that goes into the laundry. And it gets washed in the regular laundry. And it's kind of like my little, these ones that I use for doing a full face scrub or full face makeup or I use as a color switch because it's gentler on my brushes. I've got that and a little bit of um, brush cleaning spray. You just spritz it on and helps take really dark colors off if you're doing a quick switch. little concealer and yes if you've got thin or no hair on the top of your pointed head please remember to sunscreen it get your ears get your little bald pate doing the you now doing the bald thing I'm having fun with I've done it a couple of times this is this is the first time I've decided to go for distance usually it's just shave it down and then let it all grow back out this time 
you know, it's just, no, I'm going to keep it shaved down for a while. My face is all broke out. It's hot here. I got myself a new-to-me car because the car that I had was starting to be a real pain in the backside. It would just stop running for no good reason. And its air conditioner was completely foobar. And it was acting like the transmission was trying to go and all manner of such things. So we got a different used car. We just did a recharge on the AC here at the house because the car had been sitting for almost a year. And even though it runs really nice, the AC wasn't blowing cold, and it was barely moving any air. So we did little things. Little things. We got a new cabin air filter. For those of you who don't know, they put air filters for the air coming through from the outside to the inside. <laughs> Some people don't know that. Some, some people know it, but they can't find it. Depending on your car, make, model, year, all that crap, it could be in a funky place in the engine compartment like ours was. You had to pull the, the washer fluid tubing away and, and then pop the cowling off and then get down under and inside and it was just like me and some of them you have to pull the glove box out and it's behind the glove box but let me tell you when when, when mister got that nasty old filter out hmm and I do mean filthy. It was absolutely ugly. He got that out, put the new filter in. All of a sudden, the car blows air. I mean, we went from to a hurricane. <laughs> Pretty literally. Okay. I've got my Maybelline Urban Dream Urban cover. Now, this says on it, it's got SPF 50 in it. You cannot just rely on this as sunscreen. You can't. You have to put... about a tablespoon of product on your face to get it to the proper sunscreen or however much you do with a, a spray. But the, the cream sunscreens, you've got to put a wad on. And if you try doing it that with your foundation, it's going to look nasty. I'm going to put it here on my little thing it. Need a mixing palette? Glass coaster from thrift store. Yes, I'm reminding people I'm a cheap sum sum. 
Now, I really like the feeling of this foundation. But I think I like it better in the winter, I think. Yes, if you're bald, you go farther back with the foundation, too. <laughs> now, I get some funny looks around this town, little town that it is, because people will see me in a store with my hat off or whatever. Because, yeah, I wear a hat when I go out in the sun. more than one reason. I wear one that's got a brim on it to shave my face, too. And I've had people look at me and ask about my cancer treatments, and I'm going, sorry, guys. Wrong guess. I just like to have a bald head. At which point they really look at me funny. Because this is a little bitty tiny backwater town. And they're pretty much expecting everybody to be like everybody. And I'm not so much like anybody <laughs> that they know. I keep telling people I'm a rebel, but I rebel against stuff that is specific to me. The fashion police cannot come tell me that I cannot wear bright colored makeup, Best they not try and come tell me I can't wear whatever clothes I want, whether I found them at the thrift store or not. Yes, I've got this itty bitty brush that I lay the powder down with. And then I take my great big brush and dust off whatever doesn't want to stick. I like this itty bitty brush because I can get up next to my eyes. Without them disappearing under the brush. Because my other powder brush is this. Now, what was I saying about that character? Th oh, yeah. I have had somebody from way outside the um, makeup line ask me if I would be interested in doing a created character and portray her as a rather technology slack older person for a brand of food materials. I'm going, what? <laughs> you want me to do which? To whom with what? <laughs> so, I'm trying to figure this one out because I'm going everything I do on this channel is stuff that I'm interested in and I'm using materials that I know and trust. I haven't ever tried this food material. Not even once. And I'm going, if people recognize me 
from this channel in playing that created character, am I going to confuse the hoo-ha out of the people that are already used to me doing exactly what I'm doing now? And I'm confusing myself with this mess, you know? I just am. Making my head hurt. So I'm not quite sure what I think. It's just all kind of weird. And I'm going, I'm not an actress. This is all extemp off the top of my head. And it's because I like to play with makeup. And occasionally I like to play with thrift store clothes. And And part of it would actually include having to use the food material in the video. And I'm going, I don't have a kitchen set up for that kind of thing. And I don't have a camera set up for that kind of thing. I use a Logitech 922 webcam that has to be connected directly to my computer. It doesn't move easily. I would have to relocate my entire computer setup into that kitchen. Then I've got my three grandkids here, all of them are on the autism spectrum. If one of them decides to have a meltdown in the middle of filming, that could get interesting. They haven't said whether they want me to edit or if they're going to edit, if they're going to maintain the channel or if I'm going to maintain the channel. And I'm going, I believe I need some more info here, guys. No, really. Info. I'm going to stick the first run of mascara on. And yes, I'm going to look just a bit dewier than I would prefer because my room has an itty bitty, itty bitty miniature swamp cooler because I live in the desert. Well, high desert. And either way, it's really, really low humidity. So what most people consider an air conditioner isn't really as effective here. We're not trying to take hot water out of the air. We need to put cool water into the air. So I've got the, one of those little bitty cube coolers pointed at me with some ice water in it. And we're supposed to get up to about 100 today. Yeah, that's going to be fun. A hundred. Whew. 
you're really, really have a problem when the weather gets like that in a dry place. Because, believe it or not, because it's dry, it doesn't feel quite as hot when you're out in it. Because if you sweat, it's going to evaporate really fast. And let me tell you, you evap it evaporates really fast, which means you have got to stay hydrated. There is no two ways about it. Hydration must be maintained. Drink the water. Lots of it. Lots and lots and lots and lots. And if you feel really hot, do not drink really, really, really cold water. You could pass out. It can make you unhappy. And the last thing you want to do is pass out, especially if you're not with somebody who knows you. Because if you pass out, you might wake up in the hospital or you might not wake up. The heat here can be scary. I wish I had a swimming pool. But I don't have a swimming pool. And with everything shut down for COVID, I can't go to the Y. They have a very nice swimming pool. But I can't get there from here. You know? It's that, that, the Rona's going to get you thing. So there's still places like that that are shut down, which is too bad because... The Y here on early Friday mornings and before any of the classes or um, meets start on Saturday mornings, little old farts like me and the old man can get in for five bucks just to go swim for a while. At which point I'm going, yeah! I've got a hair somewhere, and it's driving me crazy. I can feel it, sort of, but I can't find it, and it's making my nose itch. Right. Let's see what kind of a mess I'm going to make now. Yeah, my hair is looking a little scruffy, what there is of it. Looking a little scruffy because I went in this morning, called myself doing something, was trying to get the layer shaved down without having to bug my husband because there's places I have to get him to do because I can't see, you know, like the back of my head. But I was, was going to get it started. And that's when I also realized that without him standing over my head with one hand to hold stuff still, when I start here, it moves a little bit and it gets kind of rumply. And because it gets rumply, I get problems with the razor dragging.
and then I'm waiting to feel a cut. And I'm like, you know what? I says to myself, self, wash that shave cream off your head. Go back in the other room. Wait for the man to wake up. And stop being a patoot. So, to, to remind me of my, my error, I get to wait until he's feeling like it. Evil man. Evil. Now, if my music vid gets out of copyright jail anytime soon, it will go immediately up. And you will get the distinct pleasure of seeing me with some rather interestingly large all side lashes. That could be fun. I like these pencils that have these little sharpener tops unless the little sharpener top decides to grab hold of everything and keep hold of it and just not make my day. Which is like now, now. This one is one of the ones I picked up from Clean Color. And it has a tendency to get just kind of a dry crust on the outside if I don't use it fairly frequently. So I end up having to do the sharpener fairly often because the only way to keep it working is to make sure I've got a completely fresh, sharp point on it. Some of them I have not had that problem with. Some of them I do. Either way. It's what works. This is one of the Tarte H2O glosses that came in one of the Ipsies. I love it. It tastes great. The flavor is called below the, the flavor. The color is called below deck. The flavor is almost like like vanilla icing, but it's got a little bit of fruit to it, and it smells delightful. I'm not really big on um, scented products, but you know what the heck? Sometimes it smells good. Let's see. Put an earring on here and there. Now, see, these are cheap earrings, which is part of the reason I have a stainless steel tunnel going through my ear. It kind of keeps the cheap earring from really getting a close contact with the skin so I don't have near as many problems with you know cheap metal allergies and that kind of stuff and this is one of the necklaces I've made recently took some medallions and some chain and had myself time there. Oh, 
oh, I'm almost out of this, which I really, really regret. This is the CoverGirl Look Lockup. And this one, I think they were changing the labels or something because it was at a on a discount counter for like two bucks. And I'm going, hey. Anyway, give it a spritz. I love this one because it's cucumber. Cucumber. Most wonderful scent in the world. Especially if you're trying to cool yourself off some. Well, this is it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure those shadows, though, are going to go in the can. Which is kind of sad. But so are they. There's no color payoff, really. They're very dusty. You have to beat them to death to get color payoff. But since I'm going nowhere... Anyway, like I said, I have some questions. Throw some answers in the comments. If you go down to the comments, you will see a great number of things. All manner of stuff, including an international list for being socially active. Wherever you are in this itty bitty world. They have listings for social justice activities in your country. Or at least any country that's normally got stuff like that that they do. It's a pretty extensive list. Black lives still matter and will matter. If you haven't done something to support Black Lives Matter, get on it. There is a connection in the description for registering to vote. You don't have to leave the house to do it. Participate. It's sometimes very rewarding. I've got my fingers crossed for this ballot this year. Let's see. I've got my camera equipment and my editing program and that kind of stuff listed down there and all of my other contacts like Twitter and Instagram and all that and the Facebook and stuff. If you've stumbled across me recently, subscribe, please. I don't know why people need to be reminded to subscribe if they think they like something. I don't get it. If you liked what you saw, thumbs up. If you want to hit the thumbs down, go ahead. Still acts, still reacts as engagement. Um, should have another couple of films suggested to you at the end. If you're one of the people that's been hanging around here for a while, thank you. I'm coming up on my two-year anniversary and I finally broke 200. Anyway, wear your mask. I dare you. Wear your mask. Stay safe. Keep your distance. And be good. Remember, 
I don't have bail money. 